This is Marissa Suretsky's feet, and um, on several occasions I have attempted to evaluate laxity, mobility, and stability, and um, failed to identify previously what I consider to be severe laxity, including multiple ligamentous complex in the foot and ankle. Um, and I'll focus right now on the anterior talofibular ligament. In a traditional test, she tested fine. Okay, uh, I can bring her up into neutral and she tests fine. I can bring her in the, uh, you know, 15 to 20 degrees of, of plantar flexion. She tests solid. Okay, however, if we let her fall into slight inversion, then it becomes significant. It becomes very obvious. Um, I can see it. I can feel it. I can feel the mobility. Um, she can feel it. And comparing sides, this one is absolutely solid. When I bring her into, into some inversion and apply a drawer test, there's no give whatsoever, no yield at all. So I conclude that she has a positive anterior drawer sign for the anterior talofibular ligament when the foot is in slight inversion. I also noted that there's greater play in the medial mobility of the calcaneus in contrasting that to this side. This is so rock solid. It just has a very, very hard, hard rubber kind of feel. And this one just has a very soft feel. That becomes more dramatic when she is lying prone. Now I did test an inversion and that feels rather solid. But would you lie on your stomach please? What really got my attention is, is, is this test, just clasping the upper part of the calcaneus and pushing it medial. And there's a natural stop point and in which I can't overpressure it. On her right, it travels extremely and I can overpressure it and it travels much further. Again on the left, comes to a solid point. There's still a lot of soft tissue visi visible and over here I, I almost occlude it at which point there's also an additional amount of rotational mobility available. What does this feel like to you? It's painful. <laughs> okay, it's painful. Can you describe the motion? Uh, it feels like it's sliding outwards. Okay, I'm going to do the very same thing with this one. I'm rotating it um, and I'm gliding it. It feels like it's not going this far. Yeah, I can um, still see about a th thumb width. may not be captured on the camera, but I can still see a thumb width of soft tissue. So I'll do that one more time and then I'll stop filming. So on this side, I'm adding a, t a, a bit of a tilt, an eversion tilt through the heel to an end point, and then I'm adding a medial rotation, and that's as far as it travels, okay? On this side, I add a tilt and then a rotation, and it basically occludes all the soft tissue there. So if I stabilize here, okay, there it is. That's a tremendous amount of motion. And I'm rather, I'm astonished at the amount of, of lateral rotation there. So it just feels to me like it's significantly more hypermobile. And if I lock out the, the uh, talocrural joint, then this is the play that I get, which is still excessive. So I am calling that subtalar, and I can just feel that kind of clunk around. I'm calling it subtalar joint instability. On this side, this is just solid. There's so little medial lateral play there, even if I place the foot in a little bit of, of uh, varus, and if I put it in a little bit of valgus, of course, it's more solid. I mean, this is just a very, very solid structure. And if I test rotation, there's very little rotation. This one has just an excessive amount of, of mobility. And um, I am blocking the uh, both malleoli to try to isolate only subtalar. So this is a lateral play. This is lateral rotation. This is medial rotation. Again, this this ankle complex uh, is certainly much more mobile on the right than the left.